You know, as the years go by and we look at the Olympics in the 1970s with uh, kind of head-scratching scr head fondness, every Olympics in the 1970s was messed up. Now, uh, the 72 uh, Munich Olympics were bad enough with the Munich uh, murders where they should have uh, postponed the games, but the, uh, again, the assassination of the Jewish athletes by the uh, Palestinian terrorist organization was bad enough. Uh, the racist Avery Brundage of the IOC wanted the games to go ahead, but they did go ahead, but there was a lot of some bizarre incidents uh, on the field and off the field. We're going to go over a little bit here. Now, initially the games were, were being called the cheerful games. Well, uh, you can't have a cheerful end to an event where uh, people are murdered, but yet the games go on. So we're going to talk about some of the weird and wacky and uh, somewhat bizarre incidents and some triumphs that uh, marked the 72 games. Now, of course, you can't talk about the 72 games without talking about the handsome Mark Spitz. Now, uh, swimming for the U.S., he set a world record when he won seven gold medals while on the way to setting a new world record for each of his in his uh, first place finishes in the single Olympics, bringing his lifetime total of nine as he won two goals in the relays in Mexico City four years earlier. Now, being Jewish, Spitz was asked to leave Munich before the closing ceremony for his own protection after fears arose that it would be an additional target of those responsible for the Munich massacre. Spitz's records stood until 2008 when they were shattered by Michael Phelps, who won eight gold medals in the pool. Now, the other big sensation of the game was Olga Corbett, who was with the Samoan Biles of her era, uh, representing the Soviet Union. She became a media star for winning a gold medal in a team competition, but failed to win in the individual all around after a fall. She was beaten by her teammate, Lumila uh, Tursheva, and finally winning two gold medals in a balance beam and a floor exercises. She did come back for Montreal in 76, and she was over, uh, overtaken by Nadia Komenich. Now, the final the men's basketball was also a farce. The United States lost to the Soviet Union what was widely considered as the most controversial game in international, international basketball history and maybe in sports history. In a close-fought match, the U.S. team appeared to have won by a score of 50-49. However, the final three seconds of the game were replayed three times until the Soviet team came out on top and claimed a 51-50 victory on the basket where the, uh, the Soviet player uh, seemed to commit a foul on the U.S. player. Ultimately, the U.S. team refused to accept their silver medals, which remained held in a vault in Luzon, Switzerland. Now, the great Lassie Ver Verin of Finland won a 5 and 10,000 meters. The later after a fall, a feed he repeated in his 76 Summer Olympics in Montreal. Now, Summer Olympics, he ran in the marathon, finished top uh, top six, but couldn't do the Zatopek uh, Tresum. Now, Valery Borzov, again a talented sprinter of the Soviet Union, won both 100 meters and 200 meters in track and field because of this. The 100 meters event was notable for the absences of favorites and world record holders Eddie Hart and Ray Robinson for their quarterfinal heats. American sprint coach Stan Wright who had been given the wrong starting time. All three qualified American athletes were at the ABC television headquarters watching what they thought were replays in the morning prelims. In fact, they were watching live coverage of the races they should have been in. Hart and Robinson scheduled the first two races, Mr. Heats, and the athletes were rushed to the stadium with Robert Taylor hurrying to take off his warm-up uh, uniform before running the later heat. Now, two American 400-meter runners, Vincent Matthews, who won the gold, and Wayne Collette, who won the silver, staged a protest on the victory podium, talking to each other and failing to stand at attention during the medal ceremony. They were eventually banned by the IOC, as Tommy Smith and John Carlos had been in the 68 Summer Olympics. Since John Smith had pulled a hamstring in the final and had been ruled out unfit to run, the United States were forced to scratch from the 4 by 4 medley relay and uh, cost them a medal, of course. Now, the great Dave Waddle won the men's 800 at be, after being last for the first 600 meters, at which point he started to pass runner after runner up to final straightaway, finally grabbing the lead in the final 18 meters to win by 0 .03 seconds and the favorite, the Soviet Evgeny Arzanov. At the victory ceremony, Waddle forgot to remove his golf hat 
CAP, which was his trademark. This was interpreted by some as a form of protest against the Vietnam War, but Waddle said no one will later apologize. Now, Australian swimming sensation Shane Gould won three gold medals, a silver and a bronze at the age of 15. Now, hurdler Abdallah Bukaram carried the Ecuadorian flag in the opening ceremony. 24 years later, he became the president of Ecuador. In Munich, he had to pull out his event due to injury. Now, handball last held in 1936, and archery last held in 1920, returned as Olympic sports after a long absence. And, of course, the very uh, TV-friendly slalom canoeing was held for the first time at the Olympics. Now, the great Dan Gable wrestler won the gold medal without having a single point scored against him. No other athlete has ever accomplished such a feat in Olympic wrestling. Now, and again, the great Wim Ruska became the first judoka to win two gold medals. Now, for the first time, the Olympic gold was taken by a representative of the referees. Now, in the marathon, American Frank Schoner, who was born in Munich, became the first from his country in 64 years to win the Olympic marathon. But as Schroeder was nearing the stadium, German student Norbert Sudhaus entered the stadium wearing a track uniform, joined the race, and ran the last kilometer. Now, thinking it was the winner, the crowd began cheering him before officials realized the hoax and a security escort Sudhaus off the track. Arriving seconds later, Schroeder was understandably perplexed to see someone ahead of him and to hear the boos and catcalls meant for, meant for Sudhaus. This was the third time in Olympic history that an American had won the marathon after Thomas X in 1904 and Johnny Hayes in 1908. And in none of these three instances did the winner enter the stadium first. Now, in the pool, there was major controversy as Rick DeMont of the United States originally won a gold medal in the men's 400-meter freestyle. Following the race, the IOC stripped DeMont of his gold medal. After his post-race urine test showed a positive for traces of the banned substance ephedrine contained in his prescription asthma medication, Marax. The positive test followed the 400-meter freestyle, also deprived of a chance of medal multiple medals, as he was not permitted to swim in any other events at the 72 games, including the 1,500-meter freestyle, for which he was the then current world record holder. Before the Olympics, DeMont had properly declared his asthma medications on his medical disclosure forms, but the USOC had not cleared him with the IOC's medical committee. The United States Olympic Committee has recognized his gold medal performance in the 72 Summer Olympics in 2001, but only the IOC has the power to restore his medal, and he has refused to do so as of 2021. Now, the men's pole vault uh, field event of the Games took place on September 1st and 2nd. Controversial roles with a new catapult used by defending champion Bob Segrin and Sweden's Shell Isaacson was declared, uh, declared to be illegal by the IAAF on July 25th. The pole was banned based on the fact that the pole contained carbon fibers after an, uh, now after an East German-led protest revealed that it contained no carbon fibers, the ban was lifted on 27th of August. Three days later, the IAAF reversed itself again, reinstating the ban. The polls were then confiscated from the athletes. Seeger and Isaacson believed that it gave other athletes, like the eventual gold medalist Wolfgang Nordwig, an unfair advantage. Seeger and Isaacson were given substitute polls, which he had never used before to jump it. Isaacson, who had just lost a world record to Seeger only two months earlier, didn't clear a height in the qualifying round and was eliminated. After Seguin's last vault, he was so incensed by the way IAAF officials handled the event, he took the pole and enforced the vault with and handed it back to IAA president Adrian Paulin. This was the first Olympics where the pole vault had been not won by American. Prior to 72, the United States had won 16 straight. Since 72, the United States has won, won the pole, only won the pole vault twice, equaling the record of Poland and components of the Soviet Union. France has won three times since 1984. Now, demonstration sports included uh, badminton, which of course is part of the Olympics now, and of all things, water skiing. Uh, Germans love the water because you saw the, uh, the, uh, the uh, canoe, kayak, uh, what do you call it, real is. Now, Jim McKay kind of summed up the games when the, the Munich attacks. He said, our worst fears have been realized tonight. They have now said there were 11 hostages. Two were killed in their rooms yesterday morning. Nine were killed in the airport tonight. They're all gone. So, uh, the games themselves were a celebration of sport, but also a celebration of the politics 
uh, in and uh, outside the games. To have a races like Avery Brundage inside the games are going to go ahead, to not give the proper security at the Munich location, and the fact it was the former Hitler controlled country that where the Jews have been killed. You know, uh, this the Jewish Palestinian question is not a, a 2021 thing. And of all things, the Palestinians are the heroes now. Well, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why the Israelis don't like the Palestinians, although the Palestinians have gone through quite a bit of hardship. Uh, you know, 72 was an example of where things were getting way out of hand. I always thought there'd be a nuclear war between Israel and what I call the Palestinian countries, but here we are in 2021 and everybody's been paid off. Maybe just like the Russians, all about the money now. It's not all, not all about power. You know, what do you call uh, uh, socialist capitalism? So ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, some of the stories of the 70, 70, 72 Olympics. If you like what we're doing here with our podcast channel, let us know what like, comment, subscribe. And uh, the 72 Olympics were a great event visually, but bad taste in your mouth, even when you see the highlights. Have a good day. Bye.